Chairman, uh, General, first of all, thank you for your service. Thank you for taking the time to visit with us personally prior to in our office. Uh, as I think back, I, I, uh, I thought perhaps one of the biggest challenges that you may face is differentiating between that of a military leader versus a civilian leader coming into the Department of Defense. Could you perhaps just share very briefly your philosophy on the difference in how you would perhaps share the difference and address any questions anybody on this committee may have concerning how you would respond militarily versus that as the civilian leader? Senator, the military is under civilian control in this country, and the result is that once they've had their say, they've given their input, the military leaders stand back. Uh, and then carry out the decision to the best of their ability. In changing uh, roles here, I have to make certain that I'm carrying out that responsibility principally to advise the elected commander-in-chief on the use of force in a way that takes into account all of America's basically uh, different strengths, economic, diplomatic, military. Generally speaking, we would use military as a deterrent role as a reassurance to our allies, and certainly, in most cases, as a last resort. So the role of the Secretary of Defense is a broader portfolio than that of a military officer. Further, it is a, a position of civilian control that works with the Congress to maintain civilian control of the military. This is not just up to the executive branch. Civilian control of the military is also a responsibility that is shared with this committee in particular and with the, the broader Congress. And I still remember my first day in 1969 standing at the newly discovered position of attention in a barber shop, and on the wall was the picture of the President of the United States wearing a suit, the Secretary of Defense in a suit, the Secretary of Navy in a suit, and below that was a list of uh, photos of the commanders, my Marine commanders. It was on its first day in the military, it was a graphic display of civilian control of the military. They're in the executive branch, but I have learned the role of the Congress over many years of testimony. Thank you. Two years ago, you advised us that this committee must lead the effort to repeal the sequestration that is costing military readiness and long-term capability while sapping troop morale. Likewise, the President-elect has called the rescinding of the threat of sequestration. So did the unanimous report of the, bi <clears throat> excuse me, of the bipartisan National Defense Panel, which was cited by the President-elect. Uh, sometimes I think we misunderstand in this country that the number one priority that we should be looking at is the defense of our country, because if we're not free, nothing else really matters. When you talk about sequestration, we seem to have a misunderstanding that somehow uh, expenditures for defense should be equalized with the expenditures for non-defense discretionary spending. Would you care to state your opinion and how you would advise the President with regard to sequestration and the elimination of those caps and what it means to the United States military? Senator, I understand the need for solvency and security because no nation in history has maintained its military power if it did not maintain its fiscal house in good order. At the same time, uh, I believe that this country has got to be prepared to defend itself. Uh, the idea of a government of the people, by the people, for the people, remains a radical thought in many people's minds in this world, and we're going to have to be able to fight for it. So as a result of that, I believe that we can afford survival. I don't believe in mathematical calculus that basically makes the Congress spectators as salami slice cuts come in and you do not have control over that. If I can't make the argument for you for why we need a military program, then I'm willing to lose it. But if I can make that argument, should you confirm me, I don't want the Congress in a role where sequestration is making decisions for you uh, and you're, you're not able to influence this. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a series of questions under cyber, but I'd like to ask if I could submit those for the record. Without objection. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your service and look forward to supporting you in this nomination. Thanks, sir.